how do you not how if you are in a digital ghetto a curated reality how could you ever break free from this by yeah this is good this is good i'll tell you how turn off all of your tvs and all of your electronics and you go live out in the middle of the forest at the river mouth the bears catch only the tastiest most tender salmon which is exactly what we at john west want John West endured the worst to bring you the best. Now, what happens if you are in... See, that's just assuming that the digital ghetto is a is reliant on devices. But what happens if, or what if, your digital ghetto is actually a byproduct that's manufactured by the government itself, each government? Like you have the Chinese government, the American government, the African government, the European government, whatever. And I know I'm just saying continents and everybody has countries, but just the idea. We got about Swahili government. Yeah, in Switzerland. <laughs> 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 but that's the issue. It's We think it's maybe just products and digital arrangements. But what if the government itself is forcing curated content which we would call propaganda right to make you live in the digital ghetto do you i guess what i'm saying is do you have to have the internet yes you think so to well i guess nowadays the satellites can pick you up in a forest too well even just outside of that think about if you start hearing on the news Let's say you go down to your local gas station and let's say you're out in the middle of the woods and they're listening to a radio and they say, hey, did you hear the government saying X, Y, Z happened or that their aliens evaded or that there was a bomb that hit or that we are attacking such and such just by simply having access to communication to people, that external source of information, it doesn't have to be the Internet. It just has to be external information. And that curated or tailored content is going to sway your decisions. You know, what's interesting about that is, is that I'm making the proposition that it's just a government. But if you think about it on a deeper level, it's actually how it works in social circles too. Like you, colleague. Like I would assume most people. You magnet... You... you you tend to magnetize towards people you probably have some type of vocal connection with. Like, of course, we all like to probably have a good debate, but we usually spend more time with people that we feel connected to. And that usually is circulated around some kind of familiar content. It's not like we l are always surrounded by, by opposition. We probably spend more time with people that we are familiar with something. Something is creating a echo chamber, and that's the people we hang out with. And it's called tribalism. Yeah, so let's think about that simple thing. In that sect of tribalism, wouldn't that be a sense of tailored content, curated content, a fictitious or digital ghetto? Yeah, but if you cut everybody off... And you sever everybody from your life and you go live out in the black forest, mm -hmm. then you got all the um, silence you want and it, nobody can say anything about it. Well, that's why what's even more interesting. Let's take it to that even next level. When you're out there in the middle of the black forest, there's still the black bears. And there's black forest ham. And black trees that have been burnt. Yep. <laughs> there's black crows. Yep. Yeah. There's still black space and black air from pollution. Yeah. There's still things out there that affect your actions. So then you can say, well, if you're isolated, maybe you're in a matrix of your mind. Or if you believe a deity, it's the matrix of a god. Well, the black trees are pretty tall. So they probably block out part of the sun anyway. 
Uh, yeah, you're probably right. Or it's Bill Gates, you know, trying to force us to pay for sun use, you know, like Monsanto's. <laughs> <laughs> Monsanto's. Yeah. Well, not in the Black Forest. The Black Forest is you're just surrounded by a bunch of really tall black trees. Is that like Narnia or something? No, it's it's like Japan, I imagine. Yeah, I've never been to Japan, but me neither. Yeah, maybe it is. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, it's it's probably black because it's so dark there, mm. and the trees. You know, I'm sure they're sagging, like the tree, the branches and stuff. Yeah, they. I think they do have a forest in Japan. I think they coin it the suicide forest. Yeah. Yeah. I think Logan Paul got in trouble because he went out there and filmed somebody who was performing their final acts. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't doubt it. And, and you know, that guy probably got sucked into his matrix. And, you know. Yeah. If you, well, yeah. If you go into a black forest, you're going to get sucked into something. Now you're going to go into that K-hole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, B2K root. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> watch out for that witch's butter <laughs> but that's what i was thinking about if everything we watch or read is fed to us by the matrix or now remember guys this is what uh, this is the point algorithm how can you see a world that isn't a digital reflection of what you really want to see because the algorithm all it does the algorithm doesn't need to feed you something. You feed the algorithm and it regurgitates your desires. It's not like it needs to make you do anything. All you do is, I like this. Like you do a search. And when you search for food, you might say, I want a hamburger. What does that automatically tell the algorithm? This person likes hamburgers. Or, and you constantly look up hamburgers. Now, the next time you just say, I'm hungry, what's it going to do? Instantly, the first thing is not going to show you chicken, pork. It's going to show you a hamburger. It's just a digital reflection of what you want. How do you get out of a matrix or an algorithm when it's literally just you? Yeah, it's the world you created. Yeah. Well, people have been saying that for decades, that you create your own reality that, with your mindset. Yeah. So, you know, all those manifesto people out there that say, you know, you can, if you just think that you're rich, then eventually you'll become rich. In your mind. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, nobody else is going to believe you, but yeah, you may believe you're rich. And, and that's all that matters. You end up a, like that guy at the uh, Continental Breakfast, the Key and Peel episode. Uh, yeah, yeah. But see, that was because the breakfast was free. Now, when breakfast costs you money, you can't convince the other people that you're rich. Now, you can say you're rich all day, but you're not going to be able to enjoy that continental European, Switzerland, American breakfast. What will you think of next, Germany? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's interesting when you look at content, right? So you go onto these algorithmic platforms, TikTok, YouTube, whatever. Let's say you are a conspiracy theorist. So you started looking up government deception or government conspiracies. The algorithm knows exactly what to show you. And so after a couple of times you go on there, what are you going to see on your feed every time? Government, Garbage. Yeah, government conspiracies. You, what you like. Let's say that you have a certain political view. Let's say you like Trump or let's say you like uh, uh, Kennedy or Biden or whoever. What are you going to start seeing every time? You're going to see those people on your political uh, feed. And just like I said, if you're hungry, whenever you search, you're going to start seeing those things. Even if you want to see stupid memes like brain rot, waste content, there's all kinds of brain rot. But when you start looking at certain types of brain rot, when next time you go on, it just is curated to the right type of brain rot, brain rot, that can get you sucked into this brain hole for hours. And the next thing you realize is like, wow, I've just been watching this stupid, nonsensical brain rot content for hours because they know exactly how to rot your brain because you've been showing them. So the more you feed the matrix, the more it's curated to your desires, sending you deeper down the algorithmic spiral. So how do you get out of this trap? 
Yeah, Joe Rogan and this other guy were talking about how the comment section is actually algorithmic too. So when you're going to the comment section, you're actually just reading stuff that the algorithm knows you want to read. Yeah, and you know they do it to create this false dichotomy. They need, they need you to argue with each other. Because if everybody's united, then you could actually come against this algorithm. And we could actually come against China. Yeah, sure. Yeah, or America or anybody else. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why China's trying to divide us through TikTok. Yeah, that's, that's true. And so what's unfortunate is even in your ambitions. So this is how stuck we are in this digital ghetto. You know, like when you literally a ghetto, when you're in this provish area, the contrast of what you see outside of the ghetto tends to be your ambitions. So if you're a provish person, you tend to see those who you think are successful and your dreams and ambition is to one day be like those people to escape the ghetto, to get out of the hood. Right. But how do you, what is creating these ambitions and future intents? If it's, if your desires are being reflected by the algorithm and the algorithm is feeding your <clears throat> or magnifying your desires and intentions, then isn't it just as true that maybe your future intentions or your ambitions or your goals are also created by the algorithm just as much? Aren't those celebrities, those rich people, those big houses, just a curated format to feed you those certain pictures and videos so you can dream in hope of getting out of this digital ghetto. Like I was talking about last week, it's just one cave to the next platonic cave. But it's like you don't get out of the digital ghetto. Let's say you are in this hood and now you made it out of the hood and now you're over here in middle class world. You just have middle class digital ghetto issues. And then when you get to be a millionaire, now you have millionaire issues of course none of us unless you're chosen get to be in the billionaire status which are probably the curators of the algorithm but we don't ever escape this digital ghetto because even your ambitions to get out are probably curated by the algorithm itself so even the escape just like in the matrix zion even the escape was created by the matrix so what is getting out of the digital ghetto? Now, for clarity, when you're saying matrix and algorithm as the same thing, are you saying this has been around before AI? Yeah, because like I was talking about before, it doesn't matter if it's a social group, like you're saying, tribalism. It doesn't matter if it's an internal thought, like, am I here? Is there a God? Is there something like that? It, the, the perplexity of... What is influencing people to believe, think, move, and act is dependent on an outside source. And so that causes individuals to ask themselves, what is causing my desire? You know, this very basic, primitive, philosophical question. Who am I? What am I? And is there anything outside of me? You know, that Descartian construct. Is it simply, I exist because I think and if everybody else is thinking, do they really exist? Or am I just thinking because something is creating my thoughts? And that is the infinitive matrix spiral. So no, it doesn't have to just be, that's what I was saying in the beginning. It doesn't have to just be the internet. We have this problem as a, as a baby when we're born. And then it just grows into your environment, which today it's the internet. So now it's even worse because at least before it could be something sensatorily, sensatorial. You could have some kind of sensatorial reality. I could go touch something. I could experience something. It could be very personal. Now everything is hyperly artificial. Like I could go touch a tree. Now you could ask yourself, is this tree real or not? Different question than saying, I'm looking at a tree on the internet. Is that tree even real at all? Like it's not just... Is this just all a figment of my imagination? It's like imagination inside of imagination. And that's when it gets even worse. 
But that's the world we live in. That's what we call the algorithm. But yeah, in today's day, it's like we have double matrix. We're already in a first matrix, which is our thoughts and consciousness. And then we enter the second matrix, the algorithm, which is the curated world by the globalists, by the people who want to manufacture a certain outcome. And why do you think these platforms exist? These platforms exist because they want to control every outcome to the highest level, you know, like a little God. 